Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Marley and I make bookish videos here on my channel so I hope you will subscribe to see more book related content. But anyways, in today's video I'm going to be starting a very exciting vlog where I'm going to be reading some new releases or like semi new releases that I have been highly anticipating. So right now I'll just kind of take you through what they are and then we can just jump into the vlog of me actually reading them and telling you a bit more about them. One of the the books that I'm going to be reading is Second First Impressions by Sally Thorne. This is the very popular author of The Hating Game and this book has been talked about a lot and people are loving it for the most part so I'm really excited. It's an adult romance book. I think the two main characters sort of don't hit it off at first and so then they have to have a second first impression. I know it takes place at a retirement home and has something to do with turtles. Another book that I want to read is going to be Take Me Home Tonight by Morgan Matson. and this is a YA contemporary book about these two friends that have a crazy sort of night in New York. Their phones end up getting lost or something like that and they're kind of like stranded and having all these fun adventures around New York so that should be really fun. And then the last book but actually the first book I'm going to be reading is A Good Girl's sorry, not A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, Good Girl Bad Blood by Holly Jackson, which is the sequel to A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, which was one of my favorite books that I read last year. It is a YA thriller mystery book following Pip, who is this teenage girl that is really into solving mysteries. In the first book, she solved one. In this book, she doesn't want to solve them anymore because of all of the danger that she put herself and her loved ones in. But when a new mystery seems to pop up in her life, she can't help but get involved. I started this one last night. I didn't get very far, only about 60 pages in, but I have to say I'm immediately drawn into this world again. I really like reading from Pip's POV. I love the romance in this, and of course, I'm very, very intrigued to know what the mystery is going to be for this one. So yeah, really excited because these are three highly anticipated reads for me, and they're all relatively new releases. So let's get into the vlog where I read them and we can see if I will enjoy them or if they will be disappointments. popping in to say I reached the halfway point in Good Girl Bad Blood and I'm loving this so much. I see why people say it is just as good as the first one or better. To give you more info on this, after solving the murder mystery in the first book, Pip has a really big following now online. She created a podcast where she talked about the mystery from the first book, she has a lot of fans and everything now, and it's a lot of pressure so she doesn't want to solve mysteries anymore, especially because of all the bad things that happen to the people around her and to herself. But then one of her close friends named Connor lets her know that his brother, his older brother went missing recently. He wants her to help figure out where he went. And at first she doesn't want to help because she, you know, she doesn't want to get involved. But when she goes to the, to the police and the police are not able to help because they're too busy or whatever, they don't really take it seriously because it's a 24 year old man that went missing. Like it's not likely that he was abducted. Pip decides to take on this mystery again because she wants to help her friend. So it's a bit different because it's not a murder that she's investigating that, you know, happened in the past. It's actually a current missing person situation. Situation. So I like that it's a different type of mystery and makes this one a little bit different The stakes are a little bit higher because Jamie that's who's missing He could still be out there or he could be dead already Pip is recounting everything that happens in the second season of her podcast so the multimedia elements are really fun in this book again just like the first one it's very similar to a lot of other books though that i've read that have that podcast element for example sadie that's back there is pretty similar in that it's told from sadie's point of view who is missing and then also the podcast so it's kind of similar in that way but this one's obviously like better like, these are some of the best books that I've read. They're just so good. Who do I suspect? Basically everyone. Everyone is suspicious at this point, only halfway through, except the brother. I do not think it, it's him, but 
everyone else like the dad is pretty sus not i forgot her name like natalie's the silva there's a lot of people that are suspicious i'm curious to see how connected it's going to be to the first book there's certain connections just within the plot so far but i'm kind of wondering if the main reason jamie's missing does have anything to do with the first book or if it's completely going to be separate so definitely interested to see that loving this book probably will just continue reading the rest of the night and finish tonight or tomorrow i have less than 100 pages left i feel like i'm getting to know the motive of our bad guy i'm not gonna say murderer because it's a missing person not a murderer but I think I'm putting together their motivation and some of the clues. I just don't know who it is. But I know in the first book, I put together some things and there were some things that were shocking. So hopefully it'll be the same where I can figure out some things and some things will still be shocking because then you feel satisfied because you put some things together yourself, but also you were still shocked which is fun. But yeah, not really much to say because it is a mystery book and I don't want to spoil anything. A few people that were like suspects are crossed off the list, like it's definitely not them. So I really am struggling to know who is guilty here, but I feel like it's going to be a good twist just with the setup. Okay, I'm on page 338 and I think I know who it is. We just got a big reveal about the motivations and so I've narrowed I've narrowed it down to who it could be. I don't think it's that amazing that I put it together. I feel like it was mostly fed to me, but we'll see if I'm right. Okay guys, it's the next day, clearly. I'm pleased to say I finished the book last night. I stayed up an hour past my bedtime to finish it, which just shows how good it is because I very much like to stick to my routine and stick to my bedtime. So that just showed I, I just couldn't put it down. I had to finish it last night. I mean, obviously like the last hundred pages, like I had to finish it. As I was saying actually before, I was right about something, but also didn't figure out something else that's just the best possible thing to happen because then i felt so smart figuring things out but then i was also shocked and left feeling very surprised very impressed by holly jackson like i don't know how she does it creates this really interesting mysteries obviously this is five out of five stars i loved it so much i see why people say it is better than the first one i'm not sure if i agree i feel like they're very much on par with each other they have differences which was really good i think this series is a lot better than something like say truly devious which is a trilogy because the mystery while you do get little answers throughout the series ultimately it is still the same mystery in all three books. I think what's so great about this series so far is that each book is its own mystery and that's great. There is going to be a third book called As Good As Dead. Don't know when it's coming out. I guess next year but I'm so excited although I do feel bad for Pip. Like she goes through a lot in this book. She goes through a lot in both books but especially this one and I feel bad for what the next one will bring because obviously she's gonna solve another one but i don't know if i mentioned this but it's kind of interesting how even though each book has been a different mystery there were definitely things that holly jackson set up in the first book for this one not a lot but there's still connections and i wonder if there's some things that were set up in this book for the third one I wouldn't be surprised. So yeah i think next i'm going to read second first impressions kind of have a more lighthearted book next because i i did start to get a little bit scared last night reading this i'm such a baby but thrillers scare me <laughs>
I'm here with my friend Allie. Hi. And as you saw, we were just traveling around today to some different uh, bargain bookstores and also chain bookstores. And so we're just gonna do a little haul for you guys. We're just gonna make it quick because we have together how many books? 23. 23 books between the two of us. So the books that we both got, one of them is Eleanor Ol Oliphant is completely fine by Gail Honeyman. This is one that I've heard about on booktube and I planned on reading next month. I don't know, it's about Eleanor Oliphant. And she struggles with a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> I bought it because Marley told me to get it. She said and, it was good. And I think it's like there's some romance in it and, co and character growth, coming of age, maybe. Beautiful. Then we both got The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. We have both read um, the guest was by Lucy Foley, so we got to read her other one. I think it's pretty similar where it's about a bunch of people at an event and then there's murder. Are there even descriptions on mass market paperbacks? <laughs> They're like, no, you don't need to know what it's about. So aside from those, I got The Hating Game, again, recommended by Marley. And because we're reading what's in your book. Well, I don't know if I really would recommend it. Well, we're reading the other, the other book. Second First Impressions by Sally Thorne. Yeah. I think from the first, same author. So yeah. just in case I do like her books. <laughs> so I'm ready <laughs> to read the next. And The German Midwife. I haven't heard anything about this, but two for 15. <laughs> yeah. So I've been trying to buy books that I don't own, but that I've read already that I just want to add, add in my collection. So I have basically all John Green's book ex books except for The Fault in Our Stars. So I wanted to get this one and I found it for cheap. So we don't really plan on rereading this, but I just want to <laughs> own this one because I own all his other books except for this, so. Yeah. I mean, it's worth it. I got Papillon <laughs> because we watched the movie and I really like the movie. So I thought, why not? And Seven by Farzana Doctor. It was in the LGBT section. Yeah. <laughs> Next, I got the one by John Mars, which I'm really excited about. I found this one for cheap as well. I know that it's very popular on booktube. I think it's getting an adaptation, so I wanted to read it before I watched that. And I think this is about a DNA test that matches you with your your one true love. But I think it's kind of like a thriller too. Ooh. Yeah, or something like that. That's interesting. Talking about thrillers, <laughs> I got The Death of Mrs. Westway by Ruth Ware. I told her to get it. Again, I don't know much about it. <laughs> and then I got Permanent Record by Mary H. Choi. Mary H. K. Choi. Just because I really like her other books. I've recently read, what is it? Emergency Contact and um, Yoke. Yoke. So adding to the collection. Then I got a new release of Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Really excited about this because I loved reading Evelyn Jones, not Evelyn Jones, Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones last year. They were two of my favorite books. So I'm hoping this one lives up to that. I've heard a little bit of mixed mixed uh, reviews, but most people like it so far. So then I got a couple manga. So I got uh, Perfect World, it's just an ongoing series. It's about a romance between these two people that met in high school and when they meet again, they found out that the guy has been in an accident is now in a wheelchair. So talks a lot about the struggles of Oh, we love disability that. rap. There's not and a lot. And Blank Canvas, My So-Called Artist Journey, Volume 1. I've read a lot of Akiko Hagashimura's books and I really like her style, so just picked it up. That's mm. her actual biography, I think. Oh, okay. Next, I have a book that I've already read, but it was one of my favorites last year, and that was The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. It's about two sisters. Probably everyone's heard of this one because it was a bestseller last year. It was offered to me when she found it. She's like, oh, this is good. You should get it. Or actually, maybe I'll keep it. <laughs> So. There's only one at the bookstore, so. <laughs> and then I got more manga. So a continuation, Kiss Me at the Stroke of Midnight, volume 11. I think it's the second to last volume. It's a really cute story. I won't go into details. And then Life Lessons. This one, I feel oh. like I've heard that it's good. It's a comedy about like this person that's in a kid's show, but shouldn't be a thing. I don't know. I can't say. Oh. <laughs> I can't really say. I don't know much about it. Then I have a bit of a random buy. So at the chapters, there was a sale on some hardcover books, including Muse of Muse of Nightmares <laughs> by Lainey Taylor. So this is the second book in a series. I don't have the first one, but this one was on sale as for you can $6. see. six dollars. So I just went for it. I have not as I said, I haven't read the first one. I don't even really know what it's about, but it's a fantasy YA series that I want to read eventually. So 
just getting ahead the, on the sequel. Artwork looks really nice. Like the actual yeah, book cover nice is cover. very nice. And then last two books for my uh, for me. <laughs> what I got the first volume of I think that these are the reprint of the Full Metal Alchemist series. And then lastly, I got Lisa Jewell's The Family Upstairs. As per my recommendation, I believe. <laughs> I think like 90% are your recommendation. <laughs> or The manga. other are just like thing that I heard about as well from other people. My final book is Better Together by Christine Riccio, aka Pole and Bananas Books. So she was a favorite YouTuber of ours. We watched her growing up. She has her had her first book come out a couple of years ago. There were some mixed reviews on it. So I'm interested in seeing her second book and if it's if she's improved in her writing or what she's changed in her writing. Um, it's about these two sisters. So there's one on each side. I think it's like the parent trap meets Freaky Friday. Pretty cute. I still can't believe we met her. <laughs> that was a wild day. So anyways, that's our haul. Let us know, have you read any of these books? Have you read any of those manga? Have you read anything? <laughs> <laughs> hey guys. Okay, so I'll admit I have completely finished second first impressions without doing any sort of updates just because I was traveling to see my friend and we did all that book shopping as you saw. I was reading on the train a bunch and didn't really have time to do an update. So I'm just gonna do a little summary now and I'll just say I gave it 4.5 stars. I absolutely loved it. It has to be one of my favorite romances that I've read. But in terms of what happens in the story, we're following Ruthie and she works at this retirement villa. She is very much the reverend's daughter and everything that you would assume comes with that as she you know, is very proper. She dresses kind of like she's an old woman like with cardigans and very covered up and everything. She very much likes her lists and is very organized, innocent. She's only had sex once, very innocent. Her whole life is working there and then Theodore comes into the picture. He is the son of the new owner of the retirement villa. He is pretty much the opposite of her. He's sort of more like a troubled guy, more a lot more carefree. He's a tattoo artist. He's also very confident, stuff like that. And he ends up working there for a bit. He's trying to get the money to become a part owner of this tattoo shop. That's like his dream. So he's working there to get the money. And they don't really have the great greatest first impression as you can imagine from the title which might make you think this is some sort of enemies to lovers thing like the hating game which was also by sally thorne but it actually is not enemies to lovers i really liked that even though they hit it they didn't really hit it off at the beginning they quickly grew to have this really nice friendship and that's what i love to see this is definitely a slow burn romance which i think not everyone likes but i love slow burn romances that's what i need i hate when they get together too quickly or they hook up too quickly this was a very slow burn romance rooted in friendship they had this really great connection we never got any too like graphic sex scenes or anything like that it was honestly just like a perfect romance book for me finally so i really enjoyed reading this i feel like it's been so long since i actually really enjoyed a romance book i will admit though at the beginning i did find it to be a little bit boring just with the retirement villa stuff i wasn't like as into it but once we got into the romance and once we got more connected to the characters i enjoyed it a lot more. The ending made me tear up and cry a little bit. I honestly feel like I wanted even more of these characters. But yeah, beautiful story. Just really recommend. I see why people have been raving about this. Now I will be moving on to my third book. I'll probably be reading that all day tomorrow. See you then. So I made it to over halfway through Take Me Home Tonight by Morgan Madsen. I'm definitely enjoying this book. It's very cute and 
As for the story, we are following these two best friends, Kat and Stevie. They're both in their senior year of high school. They're very much involved in the drama club. They are always in their school productions and all of that. So when Stevie's dad stands her up for her birthday, they decide to go to New York City anyways, even though they're not allowed to go alone. They sneak out, go without their parents' permission to New York City with a couple of different things in mind that they want to do there. And while they're there, a bunch of bad things start happening to them. Like they lose their bag. They end up getting stuck with this dog, which is a Pomeranian. They lose their phones, stuff like that. The two girls end up fighting and eventually separating as well. So then they're both on their own in New York City. So it's pretty fun. I definitely can relate to how they feel having no phone and being stranded in the big city because that did happen to me once when I was going downtown Toronto and I forgot my phone and it's very scary. But there's some like fun things happening. Like they have Brad, which is the dog. One of our characters is having a bit of a romance and it very much has a vibe of like an 80s movie and that's definitely what Morgan Madsen was going for at least because there's some references throughout. The movie that it's reminding me the most of is actually my favorite movie, Adventures in Babysitting, which is about this girl who ends up taking these kids that she's babysitting into the city and then a bunch of bad stuff ends up happening. I feel like this is very similar to that, especially because we have another storyline going on with their friend back home that has to do with babysitting that feels very random. I'm not gonna get into it because I don't even know where that storyline's going, but it feels very random to the story. I'm not really sure if it's gonna like become incorporated with our two main character storylines as well. Yeah, so it's a little bit of a chaotic book, but I feel like that fits for New York City. It's also very similar to New York Minute. The Mary Kate and Ashley movie. I borderline feel like it's copying it a little bit just with the whole dog thing as well. I haven't watched that movie in years but I know in New York Minute they end up getting a dog companion in that movie as well. I think there's like riding on a motorcycle in the movie too which they do in this one. I feel like there's a lot of similarities. I've read all of Morgan Matson's other books and I know sometimes she does little like cameos and I think we just had a little bit of a cameo but it's hard because I forget those old characters but yeah so we might see more of that going on hopefully I can actually remember the characters when they pop up but I have to say even though I'm liking it this is not going to be a favorite at all especially with the last two books I've read in this video that have really really gripped me and I've just enjoyed so much. This is definitely gonna be the worst of the three, but it's also YA contemporary, so I'm not really surprised. But yeah, I do wonder if I'm missing out on some potential references. If, if there's like an 80s movie that I don't know that she's ever referencing, or if there's ever characters from her other books that I'm forgetting, but I think there are a lot of like Easter eggs involved in this book. Hey guys, so I officially have finished Take Me Home Tonight by Morgan Matson. I think I'm gonna give it a four star rating. It's a pretty decent read. And I have to say I was correct in thinking that there was a lot of inspiration taken from my favorite movie, Adventures in Babysitting, which I believe I mentioned in my first update. Basically, there were some exact quotes that were included, some exact scenarios, like scenes exactly pulled from the movie, and then all of the main characters from the movie, which is Chris, Daryl, Brad, and Sarah, all of their names appeared in this book. For example, Brad was the name of the dog, <laughs> and then those other names appeared throughout the book. So I was like, I know this must have been inspired by Adventures of Babysitting. And then at the end, there was a little like mention of the movie. So I know that it was. So I really liked those elements because obviously Adventures of Babysitting is my favorite movie, so. I'm not sure if I mentioned, but there was actually an exact babysitting storyline in this that follows Kat and Stevie's friend, Terry, which I think I mentioned. She had like this side storyline going on that was a little bit random. It definitely made this book different than you would expect, but she has a little subplot that has to do with babysitting and getting into danger and kidnapping and stuff like that. So there's kind of a lot of random things that happen in this book, but I feel like that made it pretty fun. I think once you get into all that, it becomes a lot better. Like I definitely think the second half is the better half. Another thing I liked or I felt seen as one of our main characters, Stevie, she is actually afraid of dogs and doesn't 
doesn't really like dogs and I'm someone who grew up being afraid of them and I don't really like them. Sorry. Sorry, Brad. I kind of liked seeing a character that also didn't really like dogs because I feel like in the media, you just always see people loving dogs. I just feel like it was nice to be seen in that way, even though that character does come to like dogs more by the end but still another interesting thing if you guys have read other morgan Matson books she tends to put little like cameos of other characters in her books which a lot of authors will do that and there was a pretty big cameo if you guys have read amy and rogers epic detour amy appears in this book so that was definitely cool to see however there is a little bit of a twist regarding her appearance something that i wasn't expecting something to do with her love life is all i'm gonna say and i can see why some people might be upset by it i kind of liked it but it kind of makes me want to reread amy and roger and like remember how that book ended just something to keep in mind and let me know if you've read this and if you've read amy and roger and what you think about that twist but yeah so that's this book. So to end off this video, I think it was pretty clear that I really, really enjoyed all three of the books that I read this week, which I'm not surprised about. They were all really highly anticipated releases for me that I was really excited to get to. I think I ended up reading them in the order of my favorite book to my least favorite, ironically. So Good Girl, Bad Blood would definitely be my favorite book that I read in this video. Maybe one of my favorite books, well, definitely one of my favorite books of the year so highly recommend that book obviously then second first impressions i really really enjoyed as well nearly perfect but i think i just took off half a star because there were some parts i thought were boring in the beginning and then in last place it would be take me home tonight but i still thought this was a really cute YA contemporary story about friendship morgan madsen's really good at having her books be about a lot of different elements like friendships uh family pets uh, career like where you want your life to go kind of thing she has a lot of good themes for young adults in these books so definitely recommend her books as well so that's gonna end the video thank you guys for watching if you made it through the whole video i hope you will like comment and subscribe and do all the youtube things i hope you have a fantastic week and i'll see you in my next video as always bye